Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of what seems to be the strongest magnet we've ever discovered, at least for now. The magnet that's millions of times stronger than anything we've ever made on the planet and also something so extremely powerful magnetically speaking that if you were to stand next to it, all of the chemical reactions inside of your body would shut down completely which would pretty much kill you instantly. But let's talk a little bit more about this discovery, who made it, and what it all means. First of all, let's start right here with the video created by International Center for Radio Astronomy Research that will help me explain to you what we're talking about. You might have already guessed we're talking about magnetars. And in this case, it's a type of a neutron star that has a ridiculously powerful magnetic field. As a matter of fact, these are so powerful that they are technically the most powerful magnets in the universe. We haven't really found anything more powerful than this. Just like any other magnetar we've discovered so far, this one has a partner star and it seems to be stealing some of the material from the gas disk and then creating a kind of an accretion disk that then moves along the magnetic lines of the neutron star, hits the neutron star extremely fast along the polar regions and creates very powerful X-ray jets which is pretty much exactly how we know that they exist and what we were able to discover recently. But first of all, who discovered this, how did they do it and what did they use for this? Well, it was actually the first major discovery coming from the first ever space telescope launched by China. And even though China has been getting a lot of negative press around the world, especially this year, this particular telescope is pretty impressive. It is officially their first space telescope, I guess you can call it their first Hubble telescope, even though unlike Hubble it's not really able to see in the optical light, it's really mostly meant for all sorts of X-ray observations with the main results and the main uh, purposes of this telescope being right here. And not surprisingly, this is also the telescope that China is currently using to try to develop techniques for pulsar navigation, which is a technique that uses pulsars and uses neutron stars for deep space navigation, something that we do need to have if we want to get better at exploring the solar system and also possibly even move farther than that. And this was only three years ago, so for the past three years this telescope has been actually providing a lot of amazing data and it has been used by different scientists to discover different things. And the most recent discovery was in regards to this magnetar you see on the screen with the name right here that turned out to be an extremely powerful magnetar that the scientists behind this paper, you can find it in the description below, decided to study in more detail and discovered that, well, it seems to be the most powerful magnetar we've ever seen, which naturally also makes it the most powerful magnet, well, I guess you can say in the universe, until we discover another one that's even more powerful. But just like a lot of other neutron stars, this one is also with a partner from which it's absorbing a lot of mass and which allows it to create all of these very powerful X-ray emissions. And although normally we don't really expect very powerful magnetars to have very powerful emissions because typically the more powerful the magnetic field is, the more likely that it's going to actually stop the jets from forming. But in the last few years, we've also started discovering unusual exceptions to this rule where certain magnetars could actually possess very powerful X-ray emissions as well. And this is just one of those uh, unusual exceptions. But I guess the question is, so how powerful is this magnet anyway? And let's compare it to something that you might be more familiar with. Let's start with our beautiful planet Earth. So even though our planet's magnetosphere technically is kind of strong, Overall, the magnetic field, especially as you go across the planet, is pretty weak. And in this case, we normally measure magnetic field or magnetic flux as it's known in teslas, with the strength of Earth's magnetic field being about 31 microtesla or millionth of a tesla. So that's kind of low when you compare it to some of the other things. For example, a typical magnet that you can find on a fridge, a fringe magnet in other words, would be approximately 100 times stronger. And that's because you have a tiny object, but the actual strength of the magnetic field is stronger than the magnetic field of Earth. Obviously, if you made the entire Earth out of fridge magnets, it would have much stronger field as well. In comparison, our Sun is somewhere in between these two, so it's stronger than Earth, but not as strong as the fridge magnet. But the solar spots, the so-called sun spots, are much, much stronger because this is essentially where all of the magnetic lines are concentrated in a single spot. Here, the strength of the magnetic field is about 100 times stronger than the 
fridge magnet and about 10,000 times stronger than planet Earth. So this is a pretty strong magnetic field and, well, it does get stronger. A very good example of a powerful magnet we've been able to produce, that by the way has its origins in NASA if you didn't know, is an MRI machine that's able to produce something around 3 tesla. And that's about 10 times stronger than the solar magnetic spots, or if we were to compare it to the Earth's magnetic field, that's I think about 100 times stronger. So these are extremely powerful magnets that we've been able to produce for uh, medical reasons, and they're extremely useful today. But there have been experimental magnets with even stronger magnetic fields, even experimental MRIs. The strongest ones I read about was about 45 Tesla, which is about 15 times stronger than a typical um, MRI machine. And as the famous experiment from Redwood University showed us in back in 1997, I believe, we can even levitate different types of life by providing it with just enough magnetism. This experiment was actually famous because the scientists were able to successfully levitate a frog by using a magnet that was about 16 tesla in strength. The frog was totally fine, and the way that it was levitating is, well, essentially the water molecules inside the frog were rearranged, producing a charge inside the frog that would then force it to levitate above the magnet. But the current record for the strongest magnet on the planet produced in any lab stands at roughly around 45 tesla. So that's sort of the limit of our ability to create magnetic fields on the planet. Even the particle accelerators don't produce as strong of a magnetic field. So anything stronger than that can only be found in space. And it actually starts with white dwarfs that have magnetic fields that are usually about 100,000 tesla. But neutron stars beat everything in the universe. So normally this is in hundreds of thousands, and in this particular case, this neutron star, this magnetar, had the magnetic field of 1 billion tesla. Which is not something that's very easy to imagine. It's a really really big number, and it's an extremely strong magnetic field. And when magnetic field gets so strong, even the actual atoms and subatomic particles start to act funny. For example, in these incredibly strong magnetic fields, the vacuum itself, the empty space itself, starts acting differently. Because of these extremely powerful fields, the emptiness of space starts to act as a kind of a crystal, so the light here starts to move slower. It's nothing to do with the material on the inside, it's still vacuum, but it just starts acting strangely. This also stretches the atoms from being relatively spherical in shape to being extremely extremely elongated, almost to the point of their limit. They basically turn into tiny tiny strings. But don't get confused, this is not the same as spaghettification near black holes. This is a completely different phenomenon with very similar effects. Even the simplest atom in the universe, hydrogen, becomes elongated and turns into a very long spindle about 200 times longer than it is in thickness. So everything changes, everything becomes very unusual and things start acting much different from how they act here on Earth. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, even if you were within about 100 or 1000 kilometers away from a neutron star, for example orbiting in a spaceship, the entire chemistry inside of your body and everything that makes you alive would stop instantly. Any chemical reaction would be impossible in these regions. And that's simply because of the natural power of the magnetic field to disrupt these chemical reactions. And so these are very unusual and obviously very dangerous objects, but at the same time, they're extremely fascinating. And so hopefully by studying them in more detail, we're going to learn more about the universe and possibly more about the magnetic fields that will eventually help us create better technology here on planet Earth. But on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. And if you'd like to learn more about the study or about the discovery itself, there's more in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.